Hi everyone, Bradbone here, back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. And this week, we're taking a look at the most recent WSUS vulnerability, CVE 2025-59287. If you haven't heard about this, you need to be patching your WSUS servers now. I know the majority of my customers have this in their environment somewhere. You need to patch this. It's very dangerous. It basically allows the attacker to run any remote code that they choose. Um, EDR has been kind of back and forth here on detection on this one. As of this recording, I've been able to get it by EDR multiple times in multiple different test scenarios. Um, so yes, you need to patch this. This is an out of band patch and you need to make sure that your WSUs are covered. Now, as far as our episode of Weekly Purple Team, we're gonna show the red, we're gonna show the attack on the WSU server. And then we're going to show the detection. Now, some of the detection that I've found has been a bit iffy, right? Um, it's different than what I have seen illustrated in many articles. So I just want to make sure that we're clear on how to detect this threat, because there's some strange things that happened depending upon how it's executed. All right. For the red, we're going to start with our Kali box. And we have a Netcat listener here on port 443. It's just waiting for a shell to come back. Now we're going to be doing this the easy button way. We're going to be using a script here from TechXX. It's just a PowerShell script. It does the exploitation. It does the YSO serial payload. It's just easier to show rather than me doing all this manually and this being a you know, 15, 20 minute video just on the red team side. Pretty simple overall to get this exploit to work. There is a hard coded, well, it's not really hard coded, but you can basically figure out the right deserialization portion based on some information coming from your WC server. You can calculate what's necessary and then you can run a upload of code to the WC server. And then when the console's open, it pops a shell or pops whatever you need from the console. If you're interested in those technical details, check out Hawktrace's blog here. Uh, this was uh, one of the, this was the original write-up that I saw when I was looking for this stuff. And it's pretty detailed on the deserialization vulnerability and how that works. But we're gonna use the easy button just because it's easy to demonstrate. Okay. From there, we have our Win 2025 WSUS right here. This is a not fully patched or else it would be, you know, completely, blocked attack but it does have all the other windows patches it's server 2025 it's the most up-to-date version of wsus and then we're going to be exploiting this from our windows 11 host here the scenario is that we have a compromised host inside our network it doesn't matter if it's linux windows whatever there are exploits for all platforms we're just going to do the powershell method because it's easy to demonstrate so let's do that we have our kali rdp reverse shell listening we have our WSUS over here. We're gonna go ahead and attack that. We're gonna use this exploit script. So we'll use exploit PS1 here. Now, if you wanna use this on your own, you simply just edit the variables here. You can see I've changed the L host, the L port, and the target. If you're using HTTPS, you wanna change this to 8531 because that will be the port that you'll be using. And this will be HTTPS. You should be running HTTPS for your WC servers. Uh, so you might have to change this. And this is the reverse shell. It's just a simple PowerShell reverse shell that this one inserts. It's easy to demonstrate. There are definitely versions of this exploit out there where you can put any code you want in there. So don't think that what I'm showing here is the entirety. It is just that, yes, you can remote code execute any code that you want, right? Okay. So we're going to run this exploit. We'll go exploit PS1 here. Notice it's going to calculate everything and say RC will trigger when you open the WSUS console. This is important because this one has some telltale visual signs that you don't usually see when you open a WSUS console. I'm going to jump back over here to our WSUS server. And then notice the console here when I refresh, it's going to do some strange things. So I have hit refresh. I may have to close and re- there it goes. 
and it popped the command line twice and disappeared. And then it gives me error unexpected reset server node. That was the creation of the shell. So if I come back over here, notice now I have a shell. We'll see who we are. And then what am I on? I'm on that server, Win2025 WSUS, and I am Lucas Bishop. So I am also, I am an escalated level. Typically to launch the MMC console, you are at an escalated level. You're past the UAC. So this shell is pretty high level, right? You could do some things with this. Or, you know, you could have it ex execute code, install something like a remote management suite, basically anything you want. All right. So we have our exploit done. Notice we have reset server node here. This is the telltale visual sign that you will see. But from here, that's the exploit, right? You have control of the WC server. You have basically escalated your privileges. So that's the red. Now the blue. Now this is where things get interesting. A lot of the articles that I've seen have shown W3WP looking for cmd.exe, launching cmd.exe, and then launching something from there. In my experience, I haven't seen that. So if I take W3WP, we'll just look for 4688 or 1 running a process name of W3WP. We'll start with that. And what we're going to see the only record we're going to see is this one, at least from this exploit. And I've tested multiple ones so far, but notice what we're seeing is W3WP executable using WSUS pool and web engine for DLL to then create a named pipe. All the detection that I saw was W3WP launching CMD.exe or PowerShell. That's not the case. I'm not seeing that. So if I, even if I put stars around this, we'll just do W3WP at all, not just the process name. So W3WP. And we're just getting that one record, right? So this is what the exploit is doing. It's creating something with WSUS pool, right? So W3WP.exe, and it launches WC's pool. Now, if you launch, if you look for WC's pool, you will then find that that eventually launches cmd.exe and eventually launches whatever your payload is. But I find the better artifact to be wcservice.exe, right? Notice our parent process here is service host. This is the service launching. Then it runs W3WP, puts in that name pipe, and then the better artifact is process parent name WSUS service launching CMD or PowerShell. And notice here, we have three different variants, two different variants of the detection. So the first one here, this is the one we just ran with the PowerShell reverse shell. This is simply it popping calc. Okay. So basically, this is the better detection of the ones that you want. This is the one that I would be looking for that I would be creating triggers on. W3WP, maybe. If you want to create a rule that's a catch-all, sure. But I think this is the more accurate detection as far as I've seen from my experimentation with this exploit. All right, so let's take a look at this. And we can go a little further. Anytime there's PowerShell and it's a big blob of base 64 we can just decode that. We'll go ahead and we'll get our blob of base64 here. Everything past dash ENC. And we'll copy this over into Subchef. And I have from base64 and remove null bytes. We just paste in the base64. <clears throat> and I must have missed something here because it did not go right. Go get it again. Okay, all of our base 64. I'm missing the J, I think. Make sure I have it all. Copy that in. Back in here. Yes, I'm missing the J. 
Make sure I've got it right. There we go. And now we get something that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so notice we now have a system net sockets TCP client connection back. So there's our host and there's our port. So it's just creating a PowerShell reverse shell. This could be anything though, right? This could be, hey, I installed a Terra. I installed a product of some kind that gave me remote access to the system. But as of right now, as of this particular video recording, the detection with different EDR pro products is spotty. So patch, make sure you patch this, right? Very important. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe and hack the planet to defend better. Trying to pillage on the hacks, man.